Hello viewers, and welcome to the TV Box Stop channel. It's your host Nick here once again and welcome to the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. On today's review, we have a TV box called the Ugoose Bay M3, and this one is an Amlogic S912 Octa-Core Android 4K TV box. In my recent review of the UM4, we have seen the innovative features used in their TV dongle release. So we're about to see what the AM3 TV box can deliver. So stay tuned, we have a full review coming up next. So I'm back, and to start let's take a quick look at the box the AM3 comes packed in. In similar fashion as the UM4, the box is durable and well labelled with some specifications at the bottom. Here it shows that the processor is the Amlogic S912 Octa-Core Cortex-A53 CPU, running up to 2.0 GHz. The GPU is the ARM Mali T820 Tri-Core GPU, running up to 750 MHz. It comes with 2 GB of DDR3 memory, and 16 GB of internal storage. You have expandable storage of up to 32 GB via the SD card reader. The operating system is Android 7.1.2 Nougat. What is printed here is the firmware before their latest update. But not to worry, it comes installed with the latest Android 7.1 version with your purchase. It has 80211 AC dual band 2.4 plus 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi. It comes with Gigabit Ethernet LAN speed, and Bluetooth 4.1. Below here is some more information about peripherals and supported audio and video formats, but for the sake of time, I'll move on with the unboxing. So in the box, you have the AM3 TV box itself. You get this infrared remote control. This remote will control the basic features of the box, and it will work fine for simply streaming movies and TV shows. However, if you prefer to navigate your box with mouse-like features, a Bluetooth Air mouse or a mini touchpad keyboard would be a better option. You get an HDMI cable. You also have an additional blue USB OTG cable, this can be used for updating the firmware. You have an external antenna. Your standard 5 volts 3 amps universal DC power adapter. And a user's quick setup guide. Let's take a look at the peripherals and design. The housing is made of metal, with the Ugoose logo printed at the top. To the back, you have one HDMI port, one USB 2.0 port, you get one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, and your DC power input. To the side, you have two more USB 2.0 ports, one of which is the OTG port to work with the included OTG cable. To the other side, you have some ventilation holes alongside an external antenna. To the front, you have an LED power light. And to the bottom, you have a reset pinhole button, and you have a visible heat sink pressed right up against the ventilation holes. This is to ensure as much cooling to the CPU as possible during normal operations. So I'll now quickly set this box up on my TV, and when I return I'll continue. So I've connected the AM3, and as I start up the box, you're presented with a Ugoose startup animation which takes a couple of seconds. You're then taken to the launcher. So this is the launcher, and it takes the same design as the UM4. It's very similar, if not exactly the same as the Nova launcher. 
this interface is very easy to use, and it comes with a navigation bar for easy navigation and multitasking. Before I proceed, I'll just open the settings area to show you the version of Android. As you can see, the version of Android is 7.1.2 Nougat. This is to confirm that the information on the box where it says Android 6.0 is incorrect. Let's return to the launcher. One quick bit of information, as soon as you connect to the internet, you are prompted to perform an update. This is a good thing, as many developers don't update their firmware, leaving users to search online for updated firmware, and having to perform updates manually. They were also very professional by showing us the change log of issues to be fixed. So I'll just take a second to perform the update. I'll now open the apps section. And it's the same as the UM4. They only provide you with some basic system applications like the Chrome browser, Miracast, and the Google Play Store. From within this section, you have the ability to add shortcuts to the launcher. Simply click and drag any app you would like to add to the home screen. You also have the option to uninstall the app or cancel the process if necessary. So before I proceed, I will change the wallpaper, add a widget, and install some system information and benchmarking apps, and when I return I'll continue. Ok, so while I was installing the apps I was prompted again to perform another update, so I just wanted to show you the change log before I continue. So I've customized the launcher and installed all the apps needed for the rest of my review. And first I'll check to see if the box is rooted. It shows that the box is not rooted, but not to worry. In similar fashion as in the UM4, Ugoose has provided the option to root the box manually. So I will open the root option and enable root access for this box. I'll now check the root again. It shows now that the box is rooted, running on Android 7.1.2 Nougat operating system. This is great news, Ugoose is the only developer at this time that provides such a splendid feature. And commendations goes out to Ugoose for raising the bar to the next level. I now show the DRM information. The results show that this box only has support for Google Widevine and CENC ClearKey which allows Netflix to only show up to 720p quality. We now take a look at its system and hardware information. It shows that the manufacturer is Amlogic, and the model is the Ugoose VM3. Below it shows that the box comes with 2GB of RAM, and the remainder of the 16GB of internal storage. The CPU is a 64-bit octa-core Cortex-A53 CPU, running up to 1.5 GHz. Below it also shows that the box has support for 64-bit ABIs, which allows it to run 64-bit applications. The display is powered by the Mali T820 Tri-Core GPU, with a refresh rate of 60 Hz. The box has dual-band Wi-Fi support, and Wi-Fi Direct is supported. The version of Android is 7.1.2 Nougat, and it also shows that the box is rooted. The box is running at room temperature, and it ranges between 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. This increases to about 70 degrees during gaming. The box comes with its usual set of codecs like H.264, HEVC and VP9 decoding, all needed for 4K audio and video playback. And that's it for system and hardware information, I now move on to the benchmarks. First, I have the results of the memory read and write speeds. The AM3 has a RAM copy speed of 3447 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 47 megabytes per second and a write speed of 28, and the SD card reader has a read speed of 16 megabytes per second and a write speed of 11. 
the RAM copy speed is slightly higher than the UM4 which scored around 3300. However, the UM4 scored higher in the internal storage speeds which read around 110, whereas the AM3 scored just 47 megabytes per second. I'll now show the Wi-Fi speed results. So I tested the speed on the both Wi-Fi bands, plus the Ethernet LAN port, and the results show that on my 40 MB internet package, the box was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed on every attempt. This means with the included external antenna, the AM3 has very good Wi-Fi reception. And now the results of the Antutu benchmark. And the results show that the AM3 got an Antutu score of 58,951. This score is higher than the UM4, that came in at 33,359. And now the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. After a series of timed CPU stress tests, the AM3 got a Geekbench 4 score of 564 single core and 2556 multi core. Compared to the UM4, these scores are slightly higher. The final result is from the Ice Storm Extreme GPU benchmark, part of the 3D Mark developer series of GPU tests. In the end, the AM3 got a nice Storm Extreme score of 5811. This score is much higher than the UM4 that scored 2169. And that's it for the benchmarks. I now move on to the movie streaming and 4K features of the box. Well that's it for streaming, and I'll now run some 4K video samples.
most of the 4K video samples played without any issues. With the exception of the jellyfish video at 400 megabits per second bitrate that had some rendering issues. I'll now run a YouTube 4K video sample to see what's the highest resolution. The YouTube app plays up to only 1080p quality. For those interested in playing games, even though the box is rooted, I couldn't get the key mapping app to work. Nonetheless, I'll play a game for demonstration purposes. The name of this game is Need for Speed Most Wanted. So the game played without problems, with smooth handling and of a high quality. So in summary, the Ugoose VM3 TV box has some pros and cons. Firstly, the launcher comes with a navigation bar and it has the same features of the Nova launcher. The box is the first TV box I've seen, that grants you the option to manually add and remove root access. It has very good Wi-Fi reception with the included external antenna. It plays 4K videos at 60 frames. It also has a gamepad key mapping feature in the settings area like the UM4. And it plays 3D Android games quite well. On the flip side, it comes with an infrared remote. There is no USB 3.0 port. YouTube plays up to 1080p only, it cannot play in 4K quality. And the Super SU application didn't grant me full permissions to use my personal key mapping application. So the Ugoose VM3 is the good TV box. It has features not even seen in other TV boxes to date. So I'm giving the Ugoose VM3 the OK for purchase. If you are interested in this device, a link to this product can be found in the description area below this video. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this review, and remember to click the like button. Help spread the word, share it with friends, and subscribe to this channel for more TV Box Stop presentations.